the non-conference schedule is pretty wild for college football this fall. I talked about some games the other night that I'm looking forward to in the non-conference portion of the schedule this fall, but then I realized there are several more that I wanted to talk about. So I want to talk about a few more here for just a second. Florida at Florida State is a game that's all the way at the end of the year. It's rivalry weekend. It's week 14. Remember, kids, we have two bye weeks in the schedule for everyone this fall. Do you have any idea where either of these teams will be at that point? Florida's over-under win total is 5.5. FSU's over-under win total is 9.5. Also, keep in mind that if things go bad for Florida this year, then you'll have that whole toxic conversation of what's happening to Billy Napier. On the other side with Florida State, they could be making a serious run at a playoff spot by this point. And it's all the way at the end of the year, so like injury could, could have taken a toll. But just the potential, like array of different talking points that could be around both head coaches and both teams. I mean, if Florida State, for example, has gone on to make another playoff run this year, they haven't done it with Jordan Travis. Mike Norvell will then have done it back-to-back years with two different guys and had a lot of roster churn in the process. Also, Norvell would have had his name heavily rumored with the Alabama job, for example, and he re-ups with Florida State, and then he rewards them with another banner season. Then there's the other scenario where maybe Florida State falls off a little bit, and maybe Florida State or Florida overachieves a little bit, and that's a competitive game. There's no skill in predicting any of that, but I look forward to the game nonetheless. Much earlier in the season, in week three, I'm not sure if this has ever happened before, has Alabama ever played at Wisconsin? Bama goes to Wisconsin in week three this year. And um, I don't even know what the rest of the slate is that Saturday. Selfishly, I really hope we can go to this game because I've never been to a game at Wisconsin. And um, that's also, I believe, the first real challenge for Kalen DeBoer at Alabama. And so it's it's Luke Fickle in year two. And I... I think a lot of folks will probably overlook them nationally. I don't think Wisconsin's going to get a ton of love, but this is the kind of game, it happens every year, you know it as well as I do, where a team that's pretty solid or maybe under the radar, they get a shot at one of the big dogs early in the season, they bite them, and then all of a sudden they're off to the races. And if Wisconsin were to take down Alabama, they'd be off to the races. By the way, how about this two-week stretch for Bama? Bama goes to Camp Randall Stadium against Wisconsin. Very next week, Georgia at home. So you're going to find out really, really quick about Alabama's 2024 version under Kalen DeBoer. And they're opening spring ball there a couple of days in. So we'll probably talk about Bama a lot more Sunday. How about week one? Why wait? Let's go week one. Fresno State at Michigan. The other night, I was talking about Michigan on the show, and I thought you guys had some fair criticisms. Now, in fairness to me, someone asked whether I thought Michigan would repeat as the national champ, which, of course, my answer was no to. Like, I'm not going to pick them in March to win a national title when they're 128th in returning production. New head coach, new coordinators, new quarterback, new everything. But you guys pointed out, and you're right, defensively, they got a bunch of the same horses that they had last year that were responsible for having the number one unit in the country. I'm, I'm not suggesting there aren't good things or things to like about him. The question to me was, will they win a title? No, I don't think they'll win a title. But this is the first version or first chance we get to see this version of them either way. And I, everyone always talks about the App State Michigan thing, even though it was like 50 years ago at this point. But I'm sure as we get closer to kick off of this one, Everyone's attention will be on the week two game against Texas. And everyone will be talking in the abstract about the defending national champs, this and that. And Fresno can just float in there under the radar. And it's not going to be the biggest circle game in week one. And all of a sudden you turn it on at halftime and it's tied. But there could also be a world where Sharon Moore has his team up 28-0 at the half. So what I love most about these week one games, DeBoer will be this way. Uh, Sharon Moore will be this way. Anywhere where they've got a new staff, Jonathan Smith at Michigan State, week one, there will be conclusions drawn on these people at halftime of their week one game. It's always crazy, and yet it always happens. What about Tennessee NC State? Pretty pretty sleeper-ish on the out-of-conference slate. Not for us, though. It's a neutral site game. It's in week two. It's in Charlotte. 
you know how I feel about neutral site games. Uh, but the fact that this made it anyway lets you know how I feel about the quality of teams. Two really good teams here. NC State yet again, over under win total in the eight and a half range. Tennessee up in the nine and a half range. Um, both of them have playoff potential this year. Both of those teams on the high end have playoff potential this year. And Nico Iamaliava, we get to see him start. NC State, I think, and, and I agree with them, they feel like they'll have probably a lot more of a no-name lineup from a national perspective, but a lineup of guys they know they can win with this fall. And week two will be the first chance we get to see both of them. And lastly, also in week two, Colorado's going to Nebraska. Colorado goes to Nebraska, and Colorado will go up there a year after beating Nebraska at home. And Nebraska's sitting here with a win total of seven and a half now, which doesn't impress you if you're a Georgia fan, but seven and a half is fairly lofty uh, because you know the history there with the one possession games. You know the history there, period. Recently, Dylan Riola, likely your starter, true freshman, starter at quarterback. And then on the other side, we got Shadur Sanders, who people are talking about as a potential first-round draft pick this upcoming year. Travis Hunter rolls in there. We find out what that revamped offensive line looks like for Dion in Colorado. That'll be a really good one. It's week two. Don't have to wait very long. Also, you got the rivalry aspect. I mean, the history of college football, you got a lot of chapters that could be dedicated to that matchup there.